What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben, your host. So today when it comes to macOS Sequoia 15.2, I'll be happy to let you know that we now have a new software update. Going into the system settings right here and software update page, you can see this is macOS 15.2, the RC version number two. It's actually not an expected update that a lot of people were hoping to see today because we were anticipating the official release of macOS 15.2 officially today but apple had other plans and if i click on the more info tab right there you can see the update size for me updating from macOS 15.2 rc1 to rc2 comes in at 1.51 gigs and the release notes right here tell us a lot of the new features and changes that are actually offered by macOS 15.2 but as you can tell this is not all the changes that this update has to offer there are a few more let me quickly update my device right now and then we're gonna see what are the new changes that this update has to offer spoiler alert this is more of a complement Complimentary update and I'll get into more details about what I mean by that shortly. Just to keep you in the loop, I'll show you some other updates that Apple released alongside macOS. You can see iOS and iPadOS 18.2 RC version number two. We have macOS, of course, 15.2 RC2. This is the video for that. We also have tvOS 18.2 RC and VisionOS 2.2 RC. Unfortunately, or fortunately rather, there is no watchOS 11.2 RC2, which means that maybe this is more of a stable build and what Apple is trying to patch or resolve when it comes to the Apple Vision Pro and these other operating systems most likely doesn't affect the Apple Watch but now my device is up to date and let's go into the settings and see the new software changes. You can see right there when it comes to macOS 15.2 the software is taking 22.14 gigs and if I click on the more info tab right there Apple Intelligence has actually reduced in size previously it was averaging about 6 gigs but now it has gone down to 5 5.5 gigs and with this new build number of the RC2 you can see for 15.2 the build number is 24C100. Speaking of a possible release date this is just guesstimate I would say we might still be able to see this update come out sometime this week maybe on Thursday or maybe even tomorrow it's possible but it's also possible that Apple can delay it and release it on the 16th and then typically after that we might get like 15.3 uh, the first beta later on within the 18th on the 19th and this week this last two weeks of december apple typically doesn't release any new updates so once we get the mac os 15.3 beta 1 the next beta 2 would be coming out in january 2025 my update process for mac os 15.2 rc2 was actually seamless even though the update was averaging 1.5 gigs it actually installed pretty quick in about 10 seconds and I would say the preparation as well as the my Mac restarting and installing the OS that process was also smooth and thanks to the fact that it's a small update the whole process took about 8 to 10 minutes which is probably one of the quickest updates I've installed when it comes to this macOS 15.2 betas. One of the new changes implemented by this update has to do with Apple Pay. So now Apple Pay is available in Mongolia and shout out to Aaron P613 for disclosing this. An interesting fact about Apple Pay being supported, you can see these are countries and regions that support Apple Pay and since Mongolia I believe is in Asia, Asia, you can see it hasn't yet been updated so if you want to see it here and then it will take some time for Apple to be able to update this page or maybe Apple might update it once the latest Mac OS 15.2 is officially out as this is the RC version. If you're wondering if your device is going to support Mac OS 15.2 Sequoia then these are the Mac or devices that support Mac OS 15 Sequoia so Basically, if you are already updated or if you have a Mac that supports Mac OS 15, then you definitely have a supported device. One of the things that's going to separate the features that you are going to get when you update to this Mac OS 15.2, especially considering the fact that some Intel Macs still support Sequoia and to be specific with Mac OS 15.2, it brings a lot of Apple intelligent features among Image Playground and others. And 
and if you have any of these Intel Macs that still support Mac OS 15 Sequoia, so some of those Intel Macs, you can see the MacBook Air is 2020 MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro 2018 to 2020, if they have Intel processors and the Mac mini as well as iMac and Mac Pro, you'll still be able to get the update to Mac OS 15.2. But one thing you won't be able to get is Apple intelligence for your Mac because for you to be able to get Apple intelligence for the Mac, you notice that Apple mentions that Mac models with M1 chips and later will be able to have Apple intelligence and be able to use image playground as an extension of Apple intelligence features and the device language doesn't have to now be limited to English US. You notice that starting in December, this December 2024, these are going to be supported in more countries that have English set to Canada, Australia, Ireland, New Zealand, South Africa, UK and so now it's not just limited to the US and initially when we were updating to the first updates or betas of Mac OS 15.2 this was one of the things or wording that Apple had changed to show that Apple intelligence starting this December where Mac OS 15.2 is going to be released Apple intelligence is going to just basically be supported in more regions. The release notes of this update are actually mentioned and give us insight as to the current standing of this update. And you can see right there when it comes to 15.2 RC2, we do have a few resolved issues. Some have to do with Accelerate, others activity kit. We have authentication services there that have to do with Apple Silicon Max, and we have chat GPT integration. So this update still has or pertains existing known issues that haven't yet been resolved by mainly comparing to the previous beta this is more of a bug fix and a polish update to just make mac os 15.2 be ready for the official release so some of the resolved issues that this update has to offer one of the fix has to do with chat gpt writing tools that might have an inability to generate an image when prompted to do so in various applications such as the note app and this is something i had experienced before before, I actually thought maybe I had hit my limit with chat GPT because if you go into your system preferences and go to where it says Siri and Apple intelligence, it actually has an extension for chat GPT. And if you have hit your daily limit, it will actually tell you and you will be limited as to what you can use chat GPT with. In the messages app, this update actually fixes stickers and emojis that would show up as a blank tab when you would try and access. And if you had created gen emojis on your iPhone, you still have the ability to select those. Previously, some stickers would show up blank or even some existing emojis would still show up blank. But it's good to see that now all of them from the top all the way to the bottom, they load up pretty fast and all selections are now available. It's still missing the native ability to allow users to create gen emojis directly from the mail app or from the messages app on the mac but you still have the ability to create images in image playground that pops up as a window in the messages if you want to do a selection from your recently created images you can do that or if you click plus right here if you watch some of my previous videos you notice that this window used to pop up blank but starting with the rc1 and this rc2 seems to have improved the time delay that it takes for you to create something which is uh, this good and at least it also opens up in the messages app and loads up pretty quick which i like unfortunately even with this rc2 version the mail categories has been erased from this update so just like the previous rc1 you can't be able to find categories before you had the ability to search and find some sort of category mentioned in the code or in the help tab but with the RC2, it's been removed and probably will be delayed to come to macOS when it comes to the category experience that the mail app has to offer on the iPhone. If I go into my system preferences just to show you how my battery has been, it actually hasn't been great on the previous RC1 right there. You can see if I go to the last 10 days right there, um, here I used about 100 and let's say 70 percent of uh, charge and i got about you know 12 hours of usage not a heavy usage right there and then here you can see i got about um let's say 10 hours of usage or about 
eight hours of usage right here and i used about 100 of my charge if i go to the last 24 hours right there you can see um this window right here my mac basically dropped like drastically and i was basically just using final cut pro to edit some content that i had created and right here you can see when it comes to today my device was basically about 100 percent charged and right now you can see in a span of uh, just from here because this is around 3 p.m. and this is 6 p.m. which is right now 6 12 you can see my battery uh, from this point right here dropped all the way from 100 and is now at 42 percent you can see you know there's another bar that should show up shortly to show that we are on 40 and that's the performance that i'm getting in a span of you know a few hours and yes of course i'm using heavy duty applications like ecamm live to be able to capture my audio audio and video and record and at the same time i have screen capture and screen recording that you can see right there so yeah i am somewhat a heavy user but I know the battery experience and usage I had been getting and it's not the same as I would say what the previous update which was macOS 15.1 so I'll have to test this RC2 version and see how it does and I have my battery health which is not the greatest of course you can see it's on 86% before updating it was still on 86% but one of the things that stayed uh, relevant and pretty much similar throughout the beta testing of macOS 15.2 is actually the performance itself and the memory usage i can't really complain about how this update has been when it comes to opening different applications you can see you know i have a 16 gig memory device right there as you can see my physical memory i'm using about 13 point uh five seven so a significant amount and you can see how it's being distributed between wired memory apps and compressed and the different apps of course using the most memory it's crazy how some websites are just using the most memory right there but when it comes to cpu you know it's actually not too bad when it comes to cpu but yes memory some websites are actually drawing a lot of memory than i would like but i'll have to close those out pretty soon but other than that this is how this update is for me i would say when it comes to the two biggest new features that this mac os 15.2 has to offer for users that are going to update the first one is image playground which will allow you to generate images using your own pictures you can generate images in illustration or animation and you can also generate images from word phrases my full coverage of mac os 15.2 is going to cover that in more detail and of course one other major new feature that this update has to offer has to do with siri and apple intelligence by adding the extension and integration with chat gpt that gives you and allows you the ability to tap into chat gpt's ai capabilities to help you resolve different things create images from scratch as well and allows you to be able to compose things from scratch which is another amazing feature and you don't even need an account to use this chat gpt integration which i really like but mac os 15.2 does offer some other minor new features and changes that not a lot of people talk about for example in the screensaver tab right here if you like the wallpapers that the new imax have and you don't have an imax yourself you can actually select and choose one right there and another thing that i really like that I think deserves more credit has to do with iphone mirroring because now iphone mirroring allows you to mirror an iphone that is creating a hotspot so if you are out and about and you don't have wi-fi connection and you just want to use your iphone's hotspot you can mirror the iphone that's creating a hotspot which is good and when you connect an iphone to your mac using a usb-c cable or if your iphone is lightning before you had to authenticate authenticate and trust the device that's connected using a passcode but now you can just use your face id which adds to the convenience of course and there's many more other little features and changes that this update has to offer but for now i think we'll leave it at that as the official release and the update for mac os 15.2 i've 
combined all the new features and changes that it has to offer since i've been testing it from the first beta and all the way to this rc2 and up to the official release it's going to be a very detailed video and if that's something you want to see definitely do hit like and subscribe so that you stay up to date other than that that's about it for me stay safe and i'll see you in the next video